Hey everyone, Cloud here, and welcome to my garden the Enchanted Key Mini Quest. So, this guy is going to be a bit uh, tricky to help you for the first half, but the second half I'll be able to easily do it. Um, basically, this uh, mini quest is around using the Enchanted Key, which you use in the making and meeting history quest. Now, the purpose of the key is obviously when you rub it and you're close to a treasure, the key should get warmer the closer you get. And you'll be basically doing this to find different treasures across uh, RuneScape. Now, just to give you a breakdown of how you know how close you are to a treasure, um, if you're more than a thousand squares away, the key will say it's freezing. Um, 700 squares close to the treasure uh, is very cold, it will say. 400 to 700 squares, it will say uh, it's just cold. Um, 100 um, to 400 squares, it will say it's warm. 31 to 60, it's very hot. 5 to 30, ouch, it's burning hot. And up to 4 squares, the sweet key is steaming. So, um, during this uh, mini quest, you'll know you're getting particularly close if it says either it's cold or it's warm, and that. So, obviously, if it's freezing, you're quite far away from the actual treasure. So, hopefully, that will help you out a little bit. The other part of this, once you start um, getting close to finding the treasure, so let's say for instance you go to an, uh, an area and the key says it's cold, so you know it's close, um, if you're getting nearer to the key it should say it's either warmer than last time or colder than last time, so again that will give you an idea of what sort of direction to head in. So these are the requirements in order to complete this mini quest fully. So you want to complete the making history and meeting history really before you do this mini quest just so you get to do all the uh, treasure in one go, say he's doing it in two parts. You'll obviously need the enchanted key to uh, use that to find the buried chest. You will need an actual spade or inventory, it's a tool belt one won't work and um, this is obviously to dig up the buried chests. Um, any sort of agility or uh, energy boosting uh, items like boots of lightness, spotty cape, agile top etc. Um, um, to help maintain your energy levels could be very helpful um, and the main thing is you want to have full access to the lodestone network to get around the areas much quicker if you don't have full access to the lodestone network I have a guide which can be found in the description below and it's quite worth having especially with this as it's going to speed it up uh, massively so, I'm going to talk you through where to find all of the uh, treasure locations, however there is a catch, so um, the first uh, 11 treasure sites you're going to find are all going to be random and these are unlocked from the making history quest, so basically I can show you how to find them but the order of these 11 will be different to you but I will give you some hints and tips on how to know which area really you know is correct or not. Um, the first treasure site however will always be at the Fremenic province. Um, so obviously we can start off with that one and I can give you an example. Once we've done these 11 treasure sites, um, we'll then be on the meeting history treasure spot and these um, are in the same order for everyone so that will be a little bit more easier. So. So we're going to head to the first uh, treasure spot and I can tell you about how to, you're effectively going to find the treasure. Um, so you want to teleport to the Fremenic Province Lodestone using the uh, Lodestone Network and then from here we're going to head south. Now the first treasure spot is just north of uh, the Agility Shortcut near the Sinclair Mansion which you should see on the map if you load it up. Now as we're travelling to that spot, if you keep using the rub key option, um, that's the other thing I recommend, if you put the key in one of your ability bars um, you can keep using the hotkey to keep feeling the key as you're running just to make it a little bit easier so that way you have got to keep moving your mouse cursor all the time obviously the closer we get into that log the more the key reading is picking up and obviously we can eventually use that to pinpoint the exact spot which you'll see where I'm standing in the moment uh, once you're right bang on the spot it should come up with it's steaming hot and then if you dig with a spade you'll get the loot so in this case it's 20 steel arrows, 10 mithril ores and 15 law runes so from this point onwards there's going to be 10 treasure sites that will all be um, random for you. Um, I will tell you where all the locations are and obviously you'll see in the video what order it was for me. Now um, this is the way I recommend you find it. So um, you want to teleport to any of these random sort of areas or near to them as possible and obviously if the key is reading more than uh, cold so if it's cold or warmish you know you're quite close if it's saying it's freezing then the chances you're nowhere near the actual treasure spot so these are the places uh, to find uh, treasure so one is near the monastery which is close to the Ardon lodestone uh, teleport um, so that's one place um, there is another one uh, on West Ardone 
and this one's quite close to the known stronghold kind of on the outskirts of it so for that one I would say Eagles Peak Lodge so will be the closest um, there's one actually in the gnome stronghold so if you've completed the uh, tree gnome village quest I think it is you should be able to use a spirit tree to teleport into the gnome stronghold or again the eagles peak load zone will get you quite close to it so there's a, a, a possibility there that if you've got a hot key reading it could be from one of those uh, two treasure spots um, another one uh, is near to the edgefield lodestone and the spot you're actually looking for is near the uh, Dwarven Mine. The other one will be uh, Thalador Lodestone and the location for this one is uh, in the Clan Camp which is pretty much the very southern part of Thalador, um, so you've obviously got that one. There is also Mudskipper Point, so again the closest Lodestone for that one will be Port Serim, so if you're near there and you start picking up key readings it will probably be for that spot. There's the Lumbridge Swamp Cave, so um, either the Lumbridge Lodestone or Drain the Lodestone will pinpoint near this uh, spot when it's uh, that turn for the treasure. There's Alcarid, so you've either got the Alcarid Lodestone or Jeweling Ring near the Jewel Ring, it's pretty close to that as well. Uh, near to the Exam Centre, so for that one, Varrock Lodestone is very close to that. And then the other final uh, treasure spot is in the Grand Exchange, pretty much bang in the middle of it. So those are all the treasure spots, so the best method to find uh, which uh, treasure you need to go to is if you keep sort of teleporting between those lodestones I mentioned and keep doing key readings, the minute you start picking up like a warm key reading you'll know you're close to the treasure and then you should start being able to find it from there. Now obviously in the uh, footage now playing you'll see me obviously doing it in the order I was uh, given and you'll see me find the treasure so the only other way you could possibly do it, although it'll be a lot of a long winded way, is is uh, obviously memorize where all these spots are by watching my videos so you'll know all the locations of the treasure and then literally just keep alternating uh, within them and obviously once you found one you can eliminate that one out of the process and eventually you should kind of do a, a few loops around until you find all 11 treasure spots so I know it's a little bit uh, bland the info on that there's not really much I can say or do to help you in that aspect other than show you where uh, the spots actually are and obviously the tip I've given you there is to teleport to the closest load zone and see if you pick up a key reading however once you've found all those 11 or 10 extra uh, treasure sites like I said uh, you'll now be able to um, get the rewards from the meeting history quest completion and these ones are actually in order so that way I can help you a bit more better so um, like I said uh, for this bit about going around the random treasures if you just keep alternating load zones and you'll see me doing this anyway during the footage I'm just going to play it all to you you'll see me keep doing key readings and I use that as well as the uh, load zone network to pinpoint what treasures need to be found so and like I said once you've got one out of the way um, it should make it a lot easier as you'll be able to uh, eliminate the process of um, certain lodestones needing to be accessed anymore so it should narrow it down a bit uh, if you get really stuck on this particular section, leave a comment in the comment section and I'll try and help you out. But like I said, once you've found all 11 treasures, which is including the Fremenic one we had, um, you will now be able to find the meeting history treasures, which I'll speak to you about in a moment. Okay, so hopefully you've found all the treasures from the making history quest. That's the hard bit out of the way. Now it's the really easy bit. So all these treasures are going to be in the same uh, order for you, it's only the making history ones that are randomised so I can actually talk you through this a bit better. So the actual spot is pretty much right here, right next to the crystal tree, so you can't go wrong. Uh, dig here and you'll get 510 coins, 3 gold charms, 15 law runes, 20 mere for arrows. So the next part is at Shanty Pass, so you want to teleport using the uh, Alcarid Lodestone and then head to Shanty Pass. Um, and the actual spot is three steps west of the musician, so you can't really go wrong there. Again, the key should say it's steaming hot. Uh, the loot you'll get from that is 530 coins, 3 gold charms, 10 PR essence noted and 3 uncat sapphires noted. After that we need to head to Brimhaven, um, this one is actually very very close to the Karamja Low Zone, so definitely go there. Uh, and then from there you want to go sort of northwest. it's right near uh, the ocean, it's actually west of the lake, west of Brimhaven. Um, but again, see where I'm standing, dig here you'll get 560 coins, 1 green charm, 5 cosmic runes and 2 uncut emeralds noted. 
Now we have to go to the wilderness. Uh, just be careful what you're bringing. It's not really high level of the wilderness to be fair, so you should be all right. Um, it's actually directly north of the Grand Exchange, pretty much, um, and it's south of the Chaos Tunnel entrance in the level seven wilderness. So, uh, like I said, in level seven wilderness, you're not in too much danger, especially if you go to a low populated world. Once you dig in the correct spot, you'll get 650 coins, one green charm, a hunt, uh, 10 pure essence noted, and one uncut ruby noted. Next, we want to go to the Tybro One Eye area. So go to Karamja Lodestone, and then you want to go to a mining spot, uh, and that's where it is. Now it's the mining spot that's also near Summoning Obelisk. Um, again, once you start using your key around this area, you should get 750 GP. Do green charms, 10 cosmic runes, and 30 mythical arrows. Once you've done that, we want to go to Feldip Hills. So if you use the lodestone, I think it's the Ooglog lodestone, it's cool, but it's the one pretty much in Feldip Hills. Um, and the actual spot is west of the Hunter Skill Master. So again, you keep using your key around that vicinity. Um, and once you find a spot and dig there, you'll get 800 GP, 30 gold charms, one crimson charm and 15 nature runes. Next is near the Egyptian Pyramid in the desert. So, quickest way to get here, I recommend obviously going to Shantae Pass like you normally would via like Alcarid Lodestone. Then you want to use a magic carpet to pull the Viac, and then if you can, take a carpet to Safanum. But if you can't use that carpet option yet, you'll have to walk. But the spot is pretty much east of Safanum and uh, south of the, uh, the Agility Pyramid. Again, use your key around the area to find the exact spot, and you'll get 830G. One Crimson Charm, five Death Runes, and two Uncut Rubies noted. Next, we're going back into the wilderness, and this time we're near where the bandit camp is, near uh, the uh, wilderness obelisk. So, the easiest way to get to this spot is the actual uh, spot is uh, uh, bang on north of the bandit camp and just east of the level 35 wilderness obelisk. If you go to the obelisk um, and activate it, it randomly teleports you to one of the six obelisks uh, throughout the wilderness. Again, obviously, be careful what you're bringing with you, but obviously, if you keep using the obelisk, eventually you should get to the one that you're actually meant to be digging near. So, once you're at level 35 wilderness obelisk you're right near the spot then you've only got to go slightly east and use the key around that spot to find the treasure which will be 950 coins two grimson charms three uncut emeralds uh, noted and 15 chaos runes then uh, we're still in the wilderness but it's actually quite close to the Monheim so you could either do this in two ways um, again use one of the uh, obelisks uh, to get nearest to level 27 wilderness uh, it's southeast of Clan wars I think past the black salamander hunt area um, and you literally just want to keep heading east until you go past all the lava all the green dragons and eventually you'll start getting to the spot the other way you could do it is if you use your ring of kinship to teleport to Demonheim and transverse through that area you'll get to the spot as well um, but again you're gonna see where I'm going once you use the key around the area and find the spot you'll get 950 coins one blue charm 20 pure essence noted and five gold bars noted uh, then you want to go to Death Plateau, so if you use the Burthorpe Home Teleport. And the actual spot we need to go to is just north of the Thrower Trolls on Death Plateau. So you can either use the uh, shortcut that you uh, find out about during the Death Plateau quest, or if not, just run past all the uh, Thrower Trolls and climb up the ridge. Eventually you'll find the area to use the key, and you'll get uh, 1,010 uh, coins, 1 blue charm, 20 pure essence nodes, and 10 blood runes. And then the final one, this is the most risky one though because it's quite close to where the Chaos Elemental wanders. It's in the level 71 wilderness in the middle of the Scorpion Pit. Now it's quite easy to get there, it's just obviously you've got a high chance of getting attacked around this area so really don't bring anything with you that you don't want to particularly lose. Um, so you can either use the Wilderness Obelisk uh, to get to, I think it's the level 61 Wilderness uh, Obelisk, it will eventually take you to, which is near the Wilderness Volcano and the Rogue's uh, Den, I think it's called, um, but from there you've only got to head slightly west to get to the Scorpion Pit, and like I said, beware of the Chaos Elemental, he resides near there. The other way you could do is use the Teleport Lever in Ardone or Edgefield to go to the Wilderness uh, and then head east towards the Scorpion Pit. The Obelisk method will probably be the 
quickest way. But once you get to this correct spot, uh, the scorpions I don't think should be aggressive, so you ain't got to worry about that. But you'll get 1,100 coins, two blue charms, 15 gold bars, noted, and 10 death rings. And your key will then dissolve, and that is everything. So that is everything and in total these are all the rewards all together that you would have found during the entire mini quest uh, for the enchanted key. So all the making history rewards you would have got 60 iron ores, 30 mithril ores, 263 pure essence, 15 air runes, 20 mine runes, 5 earth runes, 20 fire runes, 30 water runes, 30 law runes, 15 death runes, 20 iron and steel arrows, 30 mithril arrows, 40 iron arrow tips and you would have also got the unique god spears, the Guthic, Saradoma and Zamorak uh, Major. Is. Um, all of these rewards add up to around 44k, presuming they are sold on the Grand Exchange for the current market price. And then the rewards you get for the meeting history uh, treasure spots are 60 pure essence, 15 lore, cosmic nature, chaos, and death runes, and 10 blood runes, 50 uh, mithril arrows, 36 gold charms, 4 green, crimson, and blue charms, 3 uncut sapphires, 5 uncut emeralds, 3 uncut rubies, 20 gold bars, and 8,640 coins. And again, all all these rewards add up to roughly 75k, uh, presuming they are sold on the grand exchange of the current market price. So overall, I mean, it's going to take you time to do this mini quest, admittedly, and the rewards for it, well, if you combine that together, you're getting about uh, 115k, which, to be honest, the time it takes isn't really worth it. However, I know you need to complete the enchanted key mini quest for a number of things. I think one of them is most importantly is for the completionist cape, I believe. So a lot of you out there who are nearing uh, the requirements to do the completion of this cake. This is going to be one of them, unfortunately. So better to get it out of the way now rather than later. So. <laughs> But yeah, that is the end of my guys. Uh, again, I apologise about the first half. There's not much I can really help with to find in the making history treasures. However, you should find my guide on the second half of the treasures easier. Um, like I said, if you do run into any problems, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll help you as best I can. Um, like I said, the random order treasures, the best thing to do is just keep going in, uh, cycling through all the actual where the locations are and obviously you'll start finding each one one as it applies to you and eventually get them all done and then once you're need meeting history treasure spots you should be pretty quick and you're about to do that in about 10-15 minutes so um but yeah i have worked hard on the guide so please make sure you like favorite comment subscribe and don't forget to share with your friends cheers guys bye bye